Hi folks, John Freund here. Uh, I campaign a 1999 Mitsubishi Eclipse GSX in time, time trial, time attack on the East Coast of the United States. I am a sponsored car of Autosport Labs and they have been gracious enough to provide me with uh, race capture hardware uh, for many years now and most recently the race capture Mark III. And this video is to demonstrate how I'm leveraging uh, a really cool feature of the Race Capture Mark III, which is multiple wireless displays. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Race Capture is an amazing uh, data logging and telemetry system uh, that has a feature set well beyond its price point. Absolutely phenomenal for entry level enthusiasts and advanced enthusiasts alike. Um, my applications won't directly match other racers because other people leverage more things than I do, but um, I do take advantage of a lot of them and I really like it. <laughs> but anyway, um, so let's go over what I've done with it. Um, what I'm demo demonstrating here today is my dual display installation. So one of the great things about Race Capture is it lets you wirelessly connect Android and iOS devices that you happen to have on hand and you can use them to display information and it's live. So uh, above, this, I've had this set up for years now. Uh, since the first race capture. My phone is a timing display. I mentioned I do time trials. I need to know what kind of lap time I'm doing, how I'm improving in the sectors, uh, how many laps I've been out to guess, you know, when they're going to call the checkered on us, things like that. Um, and of course, you know, the last lap time. This gives me that. I can, <laughs> I'll explain what that display is in a sec. But uh, what it's doing is um, it's giving me that live feedback wirelessly from the race capture. The race capture is doing it with GPS data, uh, up front and my dash is the GPS uh, antenna. Um, it's getting all that data, it's calculating it based, based on prior lap data and things like that and um, giving me that live feedback. Absolutely priceless. I mean, I think it's, it's, it's really key for a time attack driver to have that, to really push the edge. Um, and it does, it, <laughs> what it's doing right now is it's actually noticing it can't detect that I'm at an actual racetrack because I'm not, I'm in my home garage. Um, that's one of the cool things. It automatically detects when you're at a track and figures out the track map and, and uses that data for all those calculations. So really, really cool stuff. But now with Mark III, I can add something else. And that's this. I'm using a run-of-the-mill NVIDIA Shield 8-inch Android tablet as a dash a dash replacement. Um, the reason you see the dash cluster still there is because this was a beta test. I ran this last weekend at uh, Virginia International Raceway in the Ultimate Track Car Challenge. I won fastest all-wheel drive and fastest, uh, what was it, real door slammer small bore, which really means fastest production four-cylinder. So pretty cool win. Um, and this was there for along, uh, along for the ride. Uh, what this is doing is going to uh, give me a dash cluster that's going to re replace a lot of things. Uh, right now, these two gauges right here, oil pressure, oil temperature, uh, you can see they're dead. They're actually going, well, they're dead because the car's not off, but these are going to go away because I've just put them into the race capture. Um, so I get this key bit information while I'm driving uh, in a really slick interface. Um, and so we'll go over that. So, um, actually, I'll talk about this real briefly. So the way this the, my phone is attached up here is I've got a basically a simple suction cup phone mount for it was for a Galaxy Note 2 that I had forever. Um, now it's zip tied to the roll cage. Uh, before it was actually suction cup to the windshield, but uh, it became unstable when I switched to a polycarbonate from Optic Armor. Um, now I just snap my phone in when I need it. Uh, when I get to the tr or when I'm ready to go out on grid, uh, I have a micro USB connector here, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, and I just start up the race capture app. It automatically connects. My Bluetooth connects, <clears throat> and uh, the race capture app um, will simply connect automatically and start uh, providing me the data I want. It defaults. My phone defaults to the timing display, which is what I need. So very very great for me because everything's automatic. Um, when you're uh, as a race car driver, you want everything as simple and streamlined as possible, especially when you're your own crew, which I am for the most part. Um, I don't have time to be screwing around with a phone that is set wrong and not connecting and things like that. So they've uh, Autosport Labs has got, uh, made great strides in making everything automated. 
The display uh, <clears throat> on the dash is uh, similarly connected with a micro USB. Oh, I guess I can go over that now. So these connectors are actually very cheap, um, 12 volt to 5 volt micro USB adapters found on eBay. Um, you know, produced in China, so no particular company really matters because um, we couldn't possibly tell what factory they came out of. But um, that's what they are, and they're providing power to my devices to charge. But I just honestly, you don't really need that. Usually, your devices are charged, and you're not draining them that much. But um, yeah, I have those connected. The devices are getting power. Um, the automation I have set up in the tablet, which will eventually be put up in a wiki uh, soon once I uh, kind of document everything I did, is, is really cool. When the, the device gets power from the USB port, it automatically turns the screen on, it um, enables Wi-Fi, uh, it will start the race capture app, bring it to the front, and immediately go to this dash display. Uh, and we'll connect to the Race Capture app as soon as the Race Capture Pro is online. Usually it takes about, I think, 30 seconds for once power hits the car for that for the Race Capture to allow wireless connections. At which point this connects. Um, it's all very seamless. And then when power is disconnected, my display automatically uh, times out in 7 seconds, goes into airplane mode, goes into a special sleep mode that is poorly documented, um, and it conserves power dramatically. Uh, I get about 30 days standby time with my uh, little tweaks. So really neat. Again, like I said, automation is huge to a single crew <laughs> race car driver. Um, uh, and so the dash display has all the key information I need. Uh, these are all customizable. I can change them to distant, different data values. I only have these five because these are key for what I need for my dash cluster, my oil pressure, oil temp, RPM, speed, battery. Um, I can use either displays for diagnostic troubleshooting of the race capture of the car because it can show me all the data. If I scroll over, I'll ignore that screen for now, I can see a lot more data. Um, you see raw stuff coming in. Very, very useful stuff. But you can also use both displays for analysis. I can go to the analysis, which I don't think I have the data logs in here right now, so don't really worry too much what you see there. But I can also um, go to setup of the uh, race capture device itself where I can start program the analog sensors and things like that. Um, really, really useful here. So I'll go back to the dashboard. Um, you can configure the types of dashboards that are displayed. This is a, what a prototype I had when I had really no, no sensors going in. Uh, I can actually disable this from ever showing, which is pretty cool, which I'll do after the video. But uh, this is primarily what I'll look at here. Now you notice I only really have a couple of key data points, but what happens if I have more, which I will uh, now that I know this works very well. What I'm planning on doing is buying a second tablet and mounting it permanently here in my dash somewhere. <clears throat> and that will be for all other sensor values. I'll have, but you can see right there I have a TPMS system, but uh, I'll have one that actually wires into race capture instead. Um, infrared tire monitors, uh, linear potentiometers for the ride height, anything that uh, I might need, uh, I'll be able to view it all there. Uh, it would be very cool, actually, on any of these. And that's the really cool thing. I can have up to three displays, one over Bluetooth, two over wireless. Um, very, very cool stuff. Uh, the way I have the uh, display mounted is um, is pretty trick, actually. This was done by RRT Racing. They are uh, a key sponsor for my efforts. I could not get anything done without them. Um, they, I came up with a general idea, and they uh, brought it to reality. So the, uh, you can see when I pulled the power, uh, race capture closed, you can see it went into airplane mode, and in any second the screen will go off. Um, but here, I'll show you what I did. Let me uh, drop the uh, steering column down a bit. Makes it easier to get the tablet out. So the tablet <coughs> is mounted into that. That might look familiar to you. That is your run-of-the-mill snap-in plastic case. I bought a $10 case off Amazon that had a flap lid. I cut the, the cheap faux leather out. Uh, we created a bracket, that um, vertical bracket like this, and then it curves downward and horizontally uh, with two fingers. And those are slotting into the bolts that hold my steering column here up to the dash bar. Uh, and it curves upward, and, and we screw this in, and they gave me a couple options with height in case I didn't like what they'd done. Oops, sorry, my garage light uh, decided to go out. Um, and then up top, so there was no permanent damage, we uh, 
we <laughs> they just used Velcro to provide some stabilization. Really neat thing, it lets me keep everything intact in case I didn't like this. Um, they did a fantastic job. Um, you guys, if you have no dash or you don't care about those things, you can obviously do something more permanent, but uh, it gives you some ideas. I really think the, the key thing is this cheap, the cheap plastic. It's, it's wonderful. The tablet just snaps right in. Um, a little bit of trimming done on the back side. Hope, I don't even know if this will come out of my uh, steering column here uh, to make room for this when the column's actually at the height I like, which is quite high. Uh, my seat's kind of low. Um, but here I'll uh, put things back in. As you can see, it's pretty easy. Just drop it in and press. And voila. Um, and when I put power, the power cable back in, this will all light right back up. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm actually pretty impressed with myself. So. Um, and I put my steering wheel back in and put it back up in position, lock it up. That's what I see when I'm driving. And you can see it's mounted at a great height through the steering wheel. I have a pretty small one. It's 320 millimeter. I happen to like that, uh, the tightness of the steering. So, and there you go. Um, so <laughs> it's a really amazing feature. I can't wait to add the other display uh, and more uh, sensors. Up top, uh, oh, I have one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, one of the great things about Race Capture is it can leverage a device's uh, wireless connectivity to the internet. Now my phone has 4G LTE. Uh, Race Capture is, can use its 4G LTE to live stream my data to Podium.Live. Podium.Live is their amazing web interface for viewing live telemetry. Remember I said that Race Capture has a feature set well beyond entry level and medium grade data logging. I mean, shoot, even Motex don't have that sort of live telemetry without buying an absurdly expensive module. So, um, I mean, it's great stuff and it's just using my phone to do it all my data everything you're seeing there plus other sensors and everything else is live streamed online uh, it's great for review later and analysis but also live view uh, teams that uh, do racing with that where they need to monitor stuff live uh, they can do so at very at a very low cost so you see the upper, upper right the little cloud symbol that's actually saying hey it's uh, I'm connected I can I'm uploading your data if, if there was any so um, yeah absolutely wonderful so that ends my uh, little demo. I know it was a bit verbose and long, but I wanted to make sure I was thorough and covered everything. If uh, you have any questions, comments, uh, go ahead and post down below. Let me know, and I'll certainly do my best to respond. I hope this was of some use to you guys. Uh, again, I think this system is fantastic, and uh, hope you do too. All right, thanks, and thanks to Autosport Labs for uh, supporting me and letting me race.